It's the captain here, joined by Nathan for another episode of All About the Bass on Anderson's TV. Yeah. Um, and Nathan's been nagging me for weeks now to do something on acoustic basses. Yeah, why not? So, well, I don't think acoustic basses get enough love, quite frankly, or any. <laughs> so yeah. well, I thought we would we <laughs> hardly address that. any. Hardly any. Um, so I kind of think, you know, the angle here, rather than doing a, a demo of a specific acoustic bass. Uh, we've gone in and chosen three of the most popular acoustic basses from the sort of the entry level kind of price point. So I say entry, entry to sort of, you know, sort of lower mid range. Mm. To kind of give you guys a flavor if you don't own an acoustic bass and you're thinking, you know, like you've got an electric bass and you're kind of into it, why, you know, what could you pick up for a relatively affordable price and what would it do? Um, and kind of why would you, you know, why might you even want one? And so when you're, I mean, what, what do you, What's your predominantly? Do you think the benefit of an acoustic bass is you know something that you uh, would just practice on, and it's more fun to practice, or you know, do you see it as a something that you could gig with if you're in the right kind of folky band? Or what, what, well, I think it's all, of, it's all of those things, isn't it? Really, I mean, you know, sort of unplugged uh, sessions are, uh, have been popular for ages. Okay, uh, you know, and it's always nice, you know, if you're going to have acoustic guitars, well, yeah, have an acoustic bass to go along with it. I mean, I, apart from like real kind of folky bands and maybe some of those kind of, you know, uh, the, the Mexican, what are those kind of, um, what's the band called? Uh, they wear the Gypsy big, Kings? No, were no, they big, no, not an actual name of a band, the style of music where they all wear the big sombreros like and the mariachi bands. Mariachi. Yeah. Apart from that kind of thing, yeah. normally, you know, certainly if I remember back to watching, you know, the, the, the famous sort of Eric Clapton Unplugged sessions and all that kind of stuff, the, I think it was Nathan East on those or whoever the bass player was on those, he didn't have an acoustic bass, he'd just play electric bass on all Maybe you couldn't get bass. one. Maybe. Maybe he hadn't seen this video and he's sitting there now going, damn it, if only I'd known. No, I kind of think it's because it's it's a different kind of, um, I, I, you know, they're not as versatile, I don't think, as an electric bass. It's much more of a niche thing. It's, a, it's a completely different a, thing. You a, cannot compare the two, you know, at yeah. all. Um, but I, I think they certainly have their place. Um, yeah, you might just want to go and sit on a beach on a holiday. That'd it, be lovely for that. Wouldn't it? I'm wondering if that's the kind of more the angle, you know, for for just like it's it's chilling out, it's sitting at home, it's you know playing on something that clearly, if you take your electric bass and don't plug it in, it's an incredibly quiet sort of you know relatively what not unresponsive is the wrong word, yeah, but it, you know you could take a, you could take a practice amp, some headphones and stuff, but then it's all uh, you know. It's, so let's um. Not really, the vibe is it? You want to sit on a beach? Let's you want to start just with. Uh, I know we, we just did the opening jam on the Sigma, but let's start with the most affordable one that we sell. Okay. So this here Ibanez one is a, a laminated sort of mahogany effect, or it's a, it's a laminate guitar but with like a mahogany veneer all wrapped round it. Um, four string acoustic guitar with a pickup in it. Um, Very good value. But for like one hundred and ninety nine pounds. So this this is like you know. This really is, you know, about as affordable as an, as a, as an acoustic bass can be. So let's, yeah. let's have some tones on here. Let's just have a... Okay. Harmonics work very nicely mm -hmm. on there. Nice. 
That sounds all right, doesn't it? I mean, they're quite quiet, an acoustic bass, relative to, you know, if I was to hit this quite hard, I could make a reasonable noise out of this, kind yeah. of, whereas, whereas acoustic basses never seem to project quite like an, a, a, um, an acoustic guitar. Well, that is true, yeah. Um, that's, a free, that's a frequency uh, issue, I think. I guess. It's, it's because the same, of the size of the presumably body. Presumably the same reason you need a 500-watt bass amplifier to compete with a 50-watt guitar amplifier, is it just because bass guess. needs... You know, is is a, is a quieter sort of frequency. And maybe that's why double basses are enormous, enormous, aren't they? Um, they? And they're still not very really loud, are they? So this is what would you sort of describe the shape here as a sort of a, is it sort of an oversized sort of dreadnought type shape? Well, yeah, I guess. I guess a little bit bigger than a regular dreadnought acoustic. It's the same scale length as something like a jazz bass would be. So it doesn't, you know, so it doesn't feel. Oh no, it doesn't feel weird play. at all. No, it just feels like any other bass. Uh, they have bronze strings on them, so they again they're not they're not your sort of steel or nickel wound kind of uh, electric bass strings. Yeah. They're basically just like fat versions of acoustic strings. Mm -hmm. S same sort of gauges that you would put on a bass guitar, though. Um, so let's have a. What we'll do here, if if Nathan plays for like you know thirty seconds or a minute. Um, we'll annotate on the screen whether you're hearing the microphone, which will give you a sort of a reputation, uh, representation of what it sounds like in the room, and then you'll see a little bit where it, um, you hear the, the preamp, which will give you a little bit of an idea of what it sounds like with just the undersaddle piazzo pickup. The undersaddle piazzo pickup will always sound a little bit thinner, but you've got to try and imagine that you know if you were at a gig and you were playing through some big PA speakers, you know you you could add that bottom end back in. Yeah, because all three of the bases that we're looking at today, they've all got um, preamps. Yeah. This one's got an Ibanez sort of own own one. Yeah. With a uh, tuner built in, I think, isn't it? Tuner built in. I think yeah. they've all got tuners built in. Cool. I was gonna make out. Cool. Uh, that's a really handy thing, obviously. And mm. then this one's quite basic. You've just got bass and treble and a volume on there. Let's go. Let's have a little bit of a, you know, like you said, I love some of that chordy stuff that you were doing. I thought that was quite, uh, that's the kind of stuff I think if I had an acoustic bass, if I was a bass player, that I could sit at home. And I often quite, you know, most of my, any acoustic guitars that I've got, I just, they're just like sofa guitars. They're not, I don't ever really use them for anything live or anything. I just sit at home and noodle them out. Enjoy. Well, then maybe, the this, silence maybe this is the bass equivalent of that. Could be. Just have one knocking about in your living room. Yeah. And fiddle about. Just pick it up. It's handy, isn't it? You can I think so. It. I think so. Anyway, let's go. Let's have a listen. Which answers the question, can you slap? Well, I was going to ask you that later, but you've just answered it. And I you, you obviously I? can. So look, let's, um, let's whack the next one up, which is if you're feeling like you're a little bit more flushed than 199 pounds and um, you jump up, not a lot, jump up to about sort of 260. Uh, you've still got, uh, let me just triple check. Yeah, you've still got laminate. This is a laminate. Uh, guitar but you have now got a cutaway on here cutaway that's very useful actually that's a nice thing to have and, uh, uh, this time now we're going for a sort of a spruce uh, top with a mahogany back and sides again uh, and a fishman pickup on it this time so like a branded pickup so this is called the fender actually I meant to I should I should say if anybody's interested mm. in looking these up I'll put links in the description below but this is the uh, brilliantly named PCBE12MH-OPN, which uh, you know took somebody a long time to come up with uh, that naming uh, sort of you know. That's a mouthful, system. isn't it? More yeah, that's one of the things I think Ibanez guitars. It's kind of you know they don't they never try and come up with romantic names for things. They just literally give it. Look at the Ibanez work. acoustic bass. That'd work, wouldn't it? Would work. Yeah, but there's a whole series of Ibanez acoustic bass. So, but anyway, that's what that is. I've one. got links below. This is the Fender CB100CE.
it's louder. Is it's it? louder than the Ibanez. Well, that was what I was going to yeah. ask you. How well, at least from where I'm sitting, it's louder. Yeah. Uh, particularly, I think the, if the open E string is is the one that's just... I think the guitars, all of them, struggle to to project the most. Yeah. Once you get up to you know playing any of the strings from the sort of you know I don't know seventh, fifth, seventh fret upwards, or particularly the the, the top two strings on here, it's pretty loud. Mm. You know, not dissimilar. Uh, let's put it in context of. Uh, let's do that sort of. Um So that's the Fender. Any? Does it feel that much different? Does it feel bigger than the Ibanez? It certainly does feel different. I don't know if it's better or worse, uh, really. Uh, yeah, no, it's all right. Man. It's, it's yeah, it's nice. Cool. And that's uh, that's about sixty pounds dearer than the Ibanez. So that's about two sixty. Yeah, um, I think I like the look of this a little better. But uh, hey, that's all. Uh, that's subjective. That whole it? mahogany thing, though, is super kind of fashionable at the moment. You know, like sort of you know the whole Ed Sheeran and the little Martin Triple O's. I'm very old fashioned stuff. and stuck yeah. in my way. Well, fair enough. That's so you like the more classic kind of spruce top look? Well, that's fair enough. Let's move on to the the Sigma, which is the kind of the. the the dearest one we've picked out for this. Now this is a solid top um, base. Ooh, yeah, quite. Not, it's quite a bit more money, isn't it? I just thinking if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, sort of solid tops and stuff like that. Of um, course, because this is a bass channel. Yes, and, of course, uh, they, you may not be aware. You so may not know about such things. On a, on an acoustic guitar, you know, sort of the, the the good ones, the best ones, are made from all solid pieces of wood, um, and then if you flipped the the top, the top is. And an acoustic guitar kind of works a bit like a speaker. So what happens is, is I strum some strings and then that forces this piece of wood here to sort of vibrate. Resonate. Resonate. And then uh, sound comes out and that's what you kind of hear. And so choice of timbers on an acoustic are probably the most important of any kind of guitar instrument. Mm -hmm. um, so... The idea of, of the top is to get a piece of wood that resonates really, really nicely, but has the structural integrity to not just, you know, implode when it's got a set of strings tuned up on the top of it. So underneath here, you'll see bracing and manufacturers over the years have tried all different styles of bracing to get that balance of sort of structural integrity and resonance correct. Um, and, you know, they've tried placing the bridge in different places and, you know, you, you, but typically speaking, you know, solid pieces of wood used for the top are relatively common. Um, so I suppose the technology of this goes back hundreds and hundreds yeah. of years. Yeah, about the sort of violin makers and yeah, that's where it all started. Absolutely. Um, now the, the the choice of woods for the back and sides uh, have uh, less impact on the tone, um, but again, still the the most you know the premium stuff will all be solid pieces of wood that are that are sort of heated up and bent into shape. Um, and again, they, they don't really, they're not really, they, they are braced, but not in the same way that the top is braced, because of course there isn't the, the tension or the stress, if you like, on the, on the back and the sides that there is on the top. Um, and you'll get, you'll see different classic combinations of timber, you know, spruce and mahogany and rosewood and all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't know, you know, how long ago it was, probably 30, 40 years ago. Somebody must have invented, uh, well, no, actually way more than that. Because I've got an old acoustic from like the 1940s or 50s, I think. That's, But anyway, people started using laminate woods to make acoustic guitars because laminate woods are, you know, much more affordable, easier to work with. Uh, and then they would just sort of stick a veneer over the top of the laminate wood to make it look like a solid piece of wood. So that's what these guitars here are, is, is a is a laminate piece of wood with a very thin veneer on the top to make it look like a solid piece. And they sound, you know, they sound completely fine and they're structurally completely fine. They just don't resonate with quite the same depth, if you like, that a solid piece of wood. Would. So, taking that on board, this is going to sound 
Well, it ought to sound a little bit better. louder and you know better, whatever we call it. So this is a laminate back and sides, but with a solid um, spruce top. And um, this is about 450 pounds. So we've added a couple of hundred pounds onto the, the fender. We've got a Fishman yeah. uh, preamp built in. A better quality Fishman preamp as well, yeah. still with the tuner. Tuner, yeah, you've got Cut more sort away. of tonal options on this one. You've got bass, middle, treble. Yeah, uh, there's a notch filter this for is the, the mid. Um, I suspect Fishman Brilliant. must rather regret what they called uh, this particular preamp on this guitar, as it's the Fishman Isis system. Um, Precis. Precis is the, but it's the, it is the Isis. Is it's it the, really? Is the model number of that one? Yes. That's Which that's I tricky. Suppose, you know, 15 years ago when they released it was probably fine. More recently, I suspect they less <laughs> less but, okay. But there we go. What's it sound like? <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not quite sure how to demo it's an acoustic bass because people are going to play whatever they want to play on it, aren't they? And I think that's the, that's the thing is there is no such thing really as an acoustic bass style, is there? I mean, I can't no, because really I've been of searching one. for one for about half an hour and I haven't found it. Yeah, so I think it as is. You've seen. I think it is literally just for each What's player like to kind of Do play his own the... thing. I mean, it's a hell of a lot louder. The the, the Sigma one is. Particularly on the bass end, that's the only one of the three where I've really felt the bottom E string is pronounced. Yeah, do you want to hear a bit um, with a pick? Yeah, just for, for a laugh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of thin with a pick. Yeah, I, it's and weird, it, isn't it? I can't see a situation live where you'd go, tell you what chaps, I'll use my acoustic bass for this one rather than my electric bass one. I can't, I, I literally see this as a, I'm sitting in the garden with a couple of my mates and we've had a few beers and we're just all gonna have a little bit of an acoustic jam. And it's yeah, just and then laugh. the phone goes, it's Katie Tunstall. <laughs> uh, can you come and do, yes, yes I can. So, I guess to surmise there, I mean this is, this is. This, summarize? This is, summarize, surmise? Not surmise, this, this is, summarize, a different word. Is it? I thought surmise was the same as summarise. No. What does surmise mean? Then? Something else. I thought it did, but anyway. Uh, I, this is about the most lack, if this is the only all about the bass video you've ever seen, <laughs> and you're just thinking, how on earth does he, you know, why does anybody watch this? Then I, I've got to be honest with you, I don't think this has been our finest hour. Um, <laughs> I think this, but you know, That's a bit feel serious, free to it? say something, you know, uplifting in the comments section below. Uh, like, you know, like, you know, something like, please don't stop making bass videos. Yeah, you, started off, you started off going, this is all my idea. You've, That's what's your yeah. idea. Oh, yeah, I know, but now it's, <laughs> it's, it was. <laughs> it's gone bad. And that reflects on me. <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, exactly. Um, oh dear, I'll get my coat.